another beautiful day to build so previously I built this box and I made that mostly out of scrap material you know that box was great until I recently got this Blackstone flat top grill um, these griddles are amazing by the way first time I ever had one um, I love cooking on this thing but it takes up space and I want to be able to secure it and it will not fit in that box so we're gonna create a different platform today to kind of secure all of this so this is kind of what we're bringing on this upcoming trip the griddle so we can do some outdoor cooking at some of the national parks because we are going to be visiting during some of the hottest temperatures in the, in the year um, we do most of our stays or most of our overnight stays are going to be in hotel rooms um, so I do have two big bags here so for the kids and my wife and myself and we'll have room for those so my plan today is to build a security system that covers the griddle uh, that bag and this bag so if we look at this together I'm not sure if it's gonna have a bottom or not but there will be one side that will go along um, this edge of the truck there is a another side that has kind of a zigzag because I want to be able to carry um, that bucket and that water so that's the zigzag out and then I also want to be able to get up into the um, rooftop camper and the only way to get through there is up through that port right there so that's the port to get through the rooftop camper so I do kind of need a little a cutout here where I can get to kind of a lower level um, and so this is what the design is going to look like there will be a back area back here for that green bag so that green bag will sit back here somewhere there will be the griddle here and then the big brown bag will be in this area and then the tailgate will close up and when the tailgate closes up it'll secure the port the entry port for getting access to all of this material and my my security goal with this is again it's to provide enough deterrence so that most people aren't going to go in and just take your stuff so getting the stuff out of sight so it'll be all covered up you won't be able to see exactly what's under this top and also if you wanted to get access to this top you're going to have to do a little breaking and entering you're going to have to either defeat the tailgate and lower the tailgate or you're going to have to chop saw and get into this thing and both of those are doable and i understand that but again we're just trying to make it a little bit more of a challenge so that's the design today so i'm going to make this all from three quarter inch plywood and let's get at it so just a little bit more on the design before we get going here um, so I did do some measurements I started off by doing a lot of measurements of the different kinds of bags that we have and I named them all and um, we have a couple that look like zebras that's the green bag that's in there right now and here's a uh, the big brown bag so and here's the grill and then I mocked up I just kind of scaled these up to millimeters multiplied these numbers by two so I got a mock up and then I also mocked up kind of my 48 by 48 square which is kind of roughly the space that we have and just to orient you the fridge is here this is the battery box so the tailgates on this side so about this 48 by 48 so using a mock-up using the same scale I was able to place all of these things in here so the green bag will fit the grill fits the big brown bag fits and I have some cutout that'll be in here that's not on this thing yet but that there's room for that too so that's the mock-up also I took height measurements the tallest height is 14 inches for that big brown bag and that's if we jam pack it full so it's not going to reach the 14 so that's going to be my maximum height right now so for each of these sides and again I'm not sure if I'm going to have a bottom but we'll see so I'm going to build this side and that back I'll probably cut the back first this back is based on these measurements it's going to be 14 inches by 48 inches I'm just going to use the natural um, width of a, a sheet of plywood for this 14 by 48 that'll give me that 48 inches in the back so that's my first cut right here we're going to do this next my next cut is going to be this side piece and again this is going to be that piece is going to be 14 by 48 also and then we'll start getting into the intricacies of this side over here which is altogether it's going to be 40 inches long but and it's also going to be 14 inches high but I got this little 
um, side piece that we're going to have to cut out. So let's do this first, we'll do this second, and then we'll figure out this thing third. This is my cut station today. This is the, the piece that we're going to be using for this. Um, this is a four by eight sheet. On the edge here on this end, I've, I measured off 14 inches from this edge to here. I'm going to make this cut first. This is going to be the back piece. And so that's the first cut. Set you off over here and we can get through this together. Just adjust the saw height here. We don't need that much depth. There we go. All right, let's get at it. <laughs> Haven't created a lot of sawdust in a while, but mostly working with metal. It's kind of nice to have that smell of wood again. All right, so piece number one is down. Next piece I'm gonna go ahead and cut, I'm gonna cut this side over here again. Height is 14 inches, and it's going to be 48 inches from the security wall out to the tailgate side. So let's measure that up and get those cut. So we got that other piece. <coughs> Take it on over. That's our sidewall over there. So this is gonna go into this area. And I'm gonna have to do some bit of finagling here because I want this to go flush up against that side. Uh, but obviously you can see my bed is is in the way there so i'm gonna make a special cut with a jigsaw just to kind of get that to fit flush in there let me take some measurements here for that all right so i've taken the measurements i've transferred them over to this board um truth be told i forgot about you and i've already started this cut but we'll get you in on the rest of it realize I'm putting you up on the same thing I'm sawing. Probably a little rough on the video there, but all right, so there's that piece. And I realized that all of this video so far I've been placing you on the thing I've been cutting and it's been pretty jumpy, so <laughs> try to make it better from here on out. <coughs> all right, and then this little bolt right here that holds the topper on. It's causing it to stick out just a little bit, I'm trying to get a little more flush. I'm just going to make a mark where that is, make a little um, a drill hole here just to take care of that. So give it a little bit of relief. I think for the drilling, you're going to be fine. All right, so that's much better. So I got two sides of that box done. Got a little bit of a relief cut here for for this part of the truck bed and then I've got that little hole there that gives me a little relief cut for uh, that bolt so now this thing sticks pretty much straight up against the edge of the truck here so that's two sides done the hard side which has the zigzag let's get that done next I have some dimensions for that um, and then eventually we'll just put the top on top of this and get it all connected up so let's get the other side over there cut and figure out what we're looking at here. Okay, but you're a little further away, but I think you're not gonna catch all the vibrations from the saw now. Anyways, height-wise, I know for sure I'm at 14 inches. So that's a for sure measurement. I'm gonna go ahead and put what we know down. So I've got already marked on one side. All right, so we're all set up for this cut. Let's go ahead and do this 14 inch cut. So now it's the pivotal question. 36 is what I originally measured for. I do like it that it's a 
It's 40 inches wide, so it gives me exactly 12 inches off of one side. I like that part. And I know 36 will work and maximizes the space inside the box. And the extra inch outside, I don't think it's going to make much difference. I'm going with 36. So let's go and mark this up at 36. Got the two pieces, turn you around here. So from this edge to this edge, we said 23 and a half, which is what it's at right now. But let's see what we got here. So this is, I give myself just a little extra. I was getting that bucket out of there wasn't the easiest. If I came out to 12, that makes the inside there, I got an extra foot in there. Not an extra, but anyways, I think I'm going with 12 inches. Okay, so this is 14 inches now. This direction. And now, what do I say? 12 inches was my measurement. So we'll come in. Do I have an edge here? Okay. okay. So that should be the pieces. So we got all the edges now. Um, this side, that little zigzag over there where the green suitcase is going to land, the grill, the big brown case start thinking about the top here. I'm not so, sure if I'm going to dual bottom or not. I'm kind of going back and forth on it. You can see my deck system has a little round edge to it, but we'll flatten this out and make this as flat as it can be and then see how structurally sound this is. And then we'll All right, let's talk about joinery here. Um, I don't have the tools to do fancy joinery, so we're going to do what I have the tools to do with right now, which is pretty primitive, but if you're a cabinet maker, you would have probably some better tools. Anyways, what I'm planning on doing is, for example, this is the side over here, and it's the full side's 48 inches here, so 40 inches from left to right, this direction. So my plan for joinery is very rudimentary, is I'm gonna use glue. So if, I'm gonna put glue on all the joints. I am going to, I have some of this one by, or I think it's one and a half by one and a half. Anyways, I will use that as some extra support so I can have something to screw to. And I have these Torx screws. So I'll put those in there, glue it, screw it, and it should hold. Um, again, if I had some fancy dowels or something like that to join this, maybe I would do a better, different way. But this is what it is. And this is what we're going to go with for today. So I'm going to start doing the connections, getting it all boxed in. And just got to make sure I keep it symmetric. So I already did kind of a, a guide over here so I don't get myself confused that that's the tailgate, the driver's side, passenger side, and that's the cap. Because, again, this is the top, but it's upside down. That's going to be flipped over and go on that side there. So, anyways, start doing the gluing and screwing. Okay. Let's get a couple of screws in here. We'll start to cinch it up. Once this glue sets up, that's really what will hold it in place, but till then, we'll have these screws and I'm never going to remove those screws either, so it should be good strength-wise. Four in, 
I'm gonna zip a whole bunch more screws in there and just get that all secured up on that side. And then I'll join back in a little bit. Sorry, I thought I had video, I thought I had you playing. Anyways, got this back side on, same thing. I put a, it's a two by two, but they're about one and a half by one and a half here. Kind of bracing. So a couple more screws to get in place on this back side. I'll put a corner piece in also to secure the corners together but let me finish up this back side and then I'll get you back in when we start to do the side piece over here okay so this is gonna be our next piece over here working on that side gluing that piece in set you there get a good angle I still have to cut the top so this this piece here is gonna have to get cut the zigzag and everything I'm gonna do that after I might use a, a router and a flush cut bit but for now Getting this piece in, I got these two together. I'm just gonna line this up. I know that's gonna go on the bottom there. So let's go ahead and get this side glued. Okay, a little bit easier now to get the screws in. Not such a weird angle. All right, so that's gonna be there, and then now we're gonna glue this side. This is gonna be the side that's gonna to connect to the top. Covered up my line there. I don't know how square it is anymore. Not square at all. Okay, so that should be square. Lock this screw the side in over here. Just gonna transfer some marks on the bottom side so I know we're kind of drilling. Okay, so we're gonna add some structural strength. To the corner pieces now, put you here, I think you'll find not doing any saw in there. Put this piece in here. Got one for this corner, one for that corner right there. So that's what it's gonna look like when we're all said and done. But I want to be able to pull these two pieces together and keep them kind of the corners kind of square. So, let's go ahead and get some glue on this piece. So I gotta pull the back side in, so I'm gonna actually go ahead and attach it to the back side, because it's already sitting pretty good there. And then I'll be able to use the hammer. All right. There's that corner. Do the same thing for this corner opposite side over here. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here and we'll tune back in after I get that done. All right, so we are gonna work on the first piece of the zigzag. Everything's looking squared up so far. Um, this is the zigzag, first piece. It's a 12 by 14. I got these two pieces already kind of cut up. So we're gonna get this glued and screwed into place. I use my my angle square to uh, get get a line here on the ground so I know what's square and what's not square. Let's go ahead and get a couple of clamps. Let's glue it first, clamp it. So this is going to fit in here, just like that. So we'll get some glue on the bottom here. Just 
Okay, so I got the box. The piece of the box done. I was filming more, but my battery ran dead, so I just carried on without you for a little bit, but you can get the idea. So it's just a lot of repeat. Uh, the process that you saw on the sides. Um, the only corner, I had this corner here that I put a little bit of aluminum angle iron on because I didn't want the bracing, that little two by two piece to be on the exposed side. I wanted it inside. So I just did this on the inside. Everything else was exactly the same. I still have to run my flush bit router around the edge there and cut off that edge. That's my plan with that. Um, but for now, I want to test fit it, make sure we're still doing okay. So check back in after I get it back in the truck. All right, so a little bit of a bear to get in there and keep the carpet flat, but anyways, it's in there. And again, this part of the top, I will flush cut this all off. So it's flush cut off, but that's the cavity we're dealing with. It's from that edge to that edge is 48 inches. So that should serve my purpose. Tailgate will close. And the goal is, is to have a piece here that conceals all of this so you can't really even touch or see what's in back there. And we'll have that piece coming up next. But I also have to cut a little bit of a relief cut around this lock. The side one, this one functions. I got space in there so you can see that lock it hits but it doesn't hit enough that I can't get it past it and then lock in place so that functions this one though no. that one comes down and it hits and you can see it hits right there and I can't get it to even if I start it I still can't get it to lock into there so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of a relief cut in here and get some of this out of there. So that's the next step is kind of do a relief cut of this and make some room for this lock. So I'll figure what out what that looks like in a little bit, but fix this bits and we need to get a, a front piece. And the front piece, and my goal is the front piece will seal up like that. So it's gonna look like that. I just holding a piece of uh, extra three quarter inch plywood in there. And the only way to get this piece out is to open the tailgate first. And then, sorry about that. I forgot to include you guys again. <clears throat> so what you've missed so far is I've hacked or jigsaw out that corner. I also got a line through here. Now I'm just kind of making sure I can fit this piece. All right, so I got a little bit there, but let's just see if that works now. That's where I was hitting before. Do I have enough? Looks like it'll lock. Oh, that's all I needed right there. Just that notch out. It does hit a little bit, but as long as I don't push it in all the way super tight first, it'll pass that and it'll lock her down. I might take a little more of this edge just to make sure, because if I have to ever uh, make that screw longer by adjusting it, it'll bump out a little bit. So I'll do some fine tuning on that, but pretty much we've got it. Okay, so next step is we're gonna take the router. I got the flush cut bit in on it. And we'll set the depth first. It's not where it needs to be yet. Um, but once we get the depth set, should be able to kind of run this should be the fastest way to kind of get it set up so let's see what I get here it's probably good but I don't quite need it Yeah, you know, I'm looking at the, the end of the blade. It's a little messed up. So I am gonna just go as full depth as I can. I don't really need it that far. Um, it shouldn't matter. It should zip right along that, that edge. Uh, we'll get her cut up. So let's 
Let's do that next. <clears throat> going rough it's working I'm gonna try going the different direction sometimes that matters and I, I never know exactly which one to go man it is just well things coming apart All right, so I'm gonna take a little pause here. I'm gonna see if I can find a different bit. This bit's, the bearing's coming off of it. And I think that's why it's jumping all over hell. So we'll do a take two of this. Okay, I was watching underneath. Luckily I was. Spinning off the bearing, which is probably hot. Oh yeah. So that's the second bearing that we spun off. Luckily I caught it. That's the only thing keeping it from cutting in deeper than um, it normally does. That little bearing. Oh, Jesus, that's motherfucker. We're gonna let that cool down a little bit. There, get up. I suppose I have to bleep that out. Although I do think I'm checking I'm not making this for kids on YouTube, so. The bearing looks good still. All right, I'm just gonna unplug it. Let's see if we can get this back in there. If you know which direction you're really supposed to go, this direction or that direction, um, maybe put in the comments so people can learn as they go. Alright, need something probably to catch that piece. don't feel comfortable routing that with one hand so I'm gonna jigsaw off the rest and then just come back through and finish the flush cut. Just by the feel of how it kicks, I do think this is the right direction. Because um, when I was going this way, I wanted to kind of tear out of there a little bit. So, But if you know for sure, comment and let me know. All right, so we're back in. After we've run the router around, we flush cut to the top. We fixed that little corner right there. Um, things should be where we need them, except for I need to do a little clean out still. But this is a three by four pan. So this should fit in here. And so I should be able to put my grill on the back edge of that, pull it towards me and push it back in. Now I do see my two by four in the very, very back. Here, I'll let you see it too. You can see that very back corner. That two by four is not letting me put the pan all the way up against the edge. So I will trim that out. Let's put it on our list. All right, do feel a little bad. That board has been with me through mini projects down here in this garage. You've seen it in a lot of things where it's used as a kind of a little desk. Um, but this is the last nice piece of three quarter inch that I have. So I'm gonna run this as the door. I have marked it. Yes, I did. Oh, here. Okay, so I've marked it 35 and 3 quarters of an inch. So 
So I measured this, this is about 26 and 5 eighths. So I, I got a cut line over there. Um, put you here and get through this cut and then we'll bring it over and give it a try. Give you a better view. So that lid will go in there just like that and it'll be nice and tight. So there's no way to get this lid off when you, once you close the tailgate. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. So the tailgate's closed, so I can move this about that far. I do have an idea of how to make it so you can't even get a gap in there, um, but we'll work that in a little bit. But for now, assume that's flush just like that. Okay. So next thing, this is that door. So it's going to be the door, but this is going to be like a tabletop too. So a camp kitchen. I don't want to have this wood. So I do, one of the things that I've done in the past and I like to do is convert doors like, you know, that you would buy without the holes in them already and convert those to desks by just laminating them. So I have some of this laminate that's left over from a project where I was converting doors. So I'm going to laminate this piece of plywood. But you start a project and you just don't know where you're going to go. And then here we are laminating a, maybe a future table here. So again, this contact adhesive, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of the back side on this side and we do both sides and you let them dry for until they get tacky. Okay, that's good. Spraying. And so this, because this is going to be a table, like maybe we're going to be cooking on it. Now, if it gets dirty, it's easier to wipe up. Easy to keep it clean. I'm just doing about a foot and a half section on the piece of plywood. I know you can't really see over there. Didn't think about your angle, but a little late now. And I'm going to do that same kind of section over here. And I have a roller somewhere, but I didn't find the roller yet. It's probably something I should have done before I started spraying it. Okay, so now we're just letting it kind of set up a little bit until it gets tacky on both sides. Then what we're going to do is drop this down, apply pressure, and then I'll peel up the other side and we'll do the same thing on the other side then. Just try not to get any bubbles. That's what you're trying to avoid. So once you get it contacted down, stick it on this side. And that's what that roller is really good for, is to kind of roll it away until you get everything without any bubbles in there. Peel back this now. Till where I can see that glue. It's about right there. We're gonna do the same thing again. This can's almost toast. I think I'm far enough. All right, we'll let that down. Try to rub it so no bubbles. No bubbles. And this is the same laminate that you would see on the countertops. So it's a good laminate to use. Like I said, I like making desks from doors, and this is a perfect laminate for that. Oh, there, there's my roller. Found it. Okay.
anyway, I'm gonna let this set up. I'm gonna stop filming and get the idea with the laminate though. It'll look good when it's all done. I'm gonna go ahead and trim up the, around the edges. And while we'll do that, I'll just keep some weight on the areas where I don't have it. For this flush cut, I don't need so much depth. It's gonna be a little bit. All right, so use the router flush cut. It's nice to be able to get off that stuff that's hanging because it, it hangs and it bows up. So you get little bubbles near the edges. So it's good to flush cut it and then keep the weight on there while it still dries. And one thing that you will want to do is this laminate around the edges now is very sharp. So I always take a flat file and just kind of file that down a little bit. Otherwise, you end up kind of having the potential to cut yourself. So just a little flat file, we'll work the edges here. Looks like we're back where we started from. Okay, so just file down the edges because that laminate gets pretty sharp. Take your... All right, so a little bit, just got done raining here, a little cooler tonight. Um, but where we left off is, I've got this port kind of blocked off now. And when you close up the tailgate, the tailgate comes up to here. But what I wanna do now is kind of finish this up. So if I pull this port off, I'll you know, see if I can set you here. You can see everything. So pull the port off here. This is going to be kind of the door for this kind of secure area in the back. All right, so the ingredients for this project that now to finish this up is I got these things off of Amazon. And you'll see these here. Let me just set this. And pull one out here. Actually, I got one in the bag. Let's do that. Okay, so this is, we can, it has three screw holes. It mounts flat. You can screw it onto this thing. Obviously, we'll probably put it in the corners, one in every corner. But then these legs are just PVC pipe. And so they will mount directly into here. And then we'll be able to get ourselves a little table. And what I've got are, these are two foot sections. I think the longer I get this, table legs the more unstable it will be so I'm gonna try two foot sections so the first thing I'm gonna do is let's lay out this this uh, let's lay this out and let's screw in our legs so the package came with six of them I don't think I'm gonna use six but I'm gonna use four of them and just kind of looking I think I'll just be able to put them kind of relatively close to the edge. Pick some some distance. We'll mark them off, and and we'll go like that. So that's what we're going to do first: is get those things screwed in, and then see how that's going to work. The only thing that I have to really stay away from at the very top is I can't have one of my legs interfering with this. So they have to be inset, you know, by about that much, and I think we can manage that. So we'll figure out what the inset is. We'll get these things drilled on. So we don't need much offset. This offset is, it's an inch and a half. Just gonna grab a pencil. And we're gonna, just to be safe, we're just gonna come in maybe two inches. So two inches from all the edges will be my Okay, so I've got kind of a center, and I think what I'll do is I'll just put that hole right there. And so that'll be my my table legs 
In fact, I think I'll just do put two on the two inch line. That still gets me an inch and a half in, so I should be good. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. It'll look like that. So each leg takes three screws. All right, and just before I get all these in, let's go ahead and test fit this one. Make sure it clears. No reason why that should not clear. All right, so that fits in there. It clears that little spot that we needed to clear and we should be able to get those legs on. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the rest. We have got all four of those legs on. Do one more fit just to make sure. Everything slides back in the spot right there. So the idea is this portal is closed up. And let's say we hit a spot where we wanna camp. So we'll pull this portal off. I will retrieve the legs and we'll put four legs in. And I can have a, a camp kitchen. So we pull the griddle out, just we slide the carrier that it's on out far enough, I'll be able to grab it. And then I'll be able to put this on the table. And again, it's gonna be a little wobbly, but it's gonna work. So that's what I'm after right there. All right, so just to help with that issue of them being able to pull it out and, and push it up. So I'm gonna add this little trim piece to the edge on both the bottom and the top, and that'll help. Don't necessarily need to add it to the bottom, but it's like it's symmetric. And it's only one cut, so I'm just gonna use the old style. So we got two pieces. A little glue and screw. It's to lift up on me. All right, this should be strong enough until the glue sets up. We'll do the same thing on the other side. This tabletop now should still fit. Oh. oh, I got a big old bolt there. There. Didn't notice this. So this piece is hitting up against that. So I may have to have a little bit of a router bit or something or, and cut into that a little bit. I'll come back when I solve that. Okay. So I can show you how I, that I fixed this thing. Um, I did have to make a little uh, improvements and I'll show you that when I get it out but so the problem was before I remember that people could come in and wedge this out and then try to finagle it and try to get it up but now I got those pieces of wood in there that stops them from sliding this piece out so you can't get this piece out um, at all so and, and to, unless you defeat the tailgate it's gonna be super hard to get this out so I drop the tailgate and lower this so you can see now there's the upper piece it keeps it a little more secure and then the lower piece same thing and then I just I just notched out um, a little piece right there for that bolt so that bolt needed this little relief cut so I did that that's not a big deal and still got our four legs for easy connecting and so I think we're in pretty good shape let's get caught up a little bit here um, last night when it was dark and there wasn't enough light so i did some of this diamond plating i put the diamond plating on the sides and i put some of these um, corner brackets on there in addition i had some felt left over so i put some kind of felt that you might um do in a, inside of a speaker box just put it on the top here to make it look a little more um, nice so one of the things that i still have to finish up is how to secure this box down 
And I've got part of that done today and I'll show you that. But essentially, someone could lift this up and it's pretty heavy, but gain access to um, what's under the box. I'll show you one of the things that prevents people from lifting it up is in the back, there's an angle iron, which you can see, let's see right there. So you can see the angle iron down at the bottom there. That actually slides right under the security wall. So the security wall and this lock down into place, you can't slide, there's no room for you to slide this forward. So the back side of this thing is kind of already locked down underneath the security wall. You won't be able to lift it up and there's no room for the security wall to, to budge that direction. So that's one side. I'm going to lock down the other side. I'll show you how we do that in a second, but let's just push this to the security wall. Let's see if I can do this without messing up the carpet. So, so slide that to the security wall and I'm going to slide it all the way over to where it's going to actually ride. Okay. So you can see now we slid it back. That angle iron is underneath the security wall, which is kind of holding down the back side. The front side is, you can still lift the front side. Um, but all right, so I got you dangling off the side of the bed here. So this is kind of where it would normally ride. So if I were a thief, I could see that I could slide this over. Just trying to see what I should, how I can prevent. So sliding it would give them some room to then maybe lift up this edge. I can lift this up, I mean, you kind of get caught here, but I think if I force it, I could break something and scratch the end. But anyways, I don't want them to be able to do this. So we're gonna lock this down a little bit more and we'll see what we can do there. Okay, so I have a plan here. So my first plan, uh, I was gonna try to use this rail here and then maybe have some kind of angle iron that's attached here. And then it's also attached to the box. The negative side with this is you can access these ports or these bolts that I'm going to hold this down with um, from the outside. So I was thinking about maybe something that they couldn't access unless they already broke into the box. And so I think what I'm going to try to do is I have this on the forge. We have these anchor things that are part of the, the bed. So if I can set you right here. Yeah, so got those things that are part of the bed and I think what I'm going to do is have a u-bolt that's here and it'll protrude into the box and then I'll be able to bolt the box to this u-bolt that's the plan I'm thinking that this might work I'm not sure if this is a long enough u-bolt or not and I have to figure out that so that's maybe one approach I've already kind of used a piece of cardboard as a Kind of a template to figure out the height of these holes that I would have to drill. Okay, so I have to drill holes there and then I can transfer that um, over to the box and then I can drill those holes over there. So that's the initial plan. I'm going to see if I can get that to work out and we'll bring you along for this. See if we can get you a good spot. So maybe right down here on the edge doing this work in the back of the bed because I always make a big mess and then everything wants to stick to this carpet that I put in here. It's just not the best choice, but at this point I think that this is what it is. Yeah, I think you can see everything. So anyways, I have that. I have the drill. I picked the drill bit out already. Um, if I have space in here, we'll go ahead and drill it from here. So I got this template like I said marked out so this is going to be one hole I think I'm going to try to transfer that before I rip the thing up here mark these holes I think the the act of drilling through the cardboard is going to maybe ruin the template all right so I can see them so now we should be able to drill them out I'm oversizing this so if I miss it by a little bit. There's the second hole. So this should maybe not fit. Oh, dang it. 
I didn't quite get the template correct, did I? All right, we're going to widen out these holes a little bit here. So we'll get the job done. side. All right, there we go. In and out. That was kind of a pain in the butt. So the trick is that I'm going to try to use is a piece of cardboard, but I already have a bad feeling about the angle here because you can see, you can get you a good angle there. You can see how that already is kind of pointing down. I think my holes are too low. That's a big size. So anyways, I'm going to see if those holes are wide enough to support these, that they're, they're obviously centered too low. Um, see if they're wide enough to support where they're at and push that in. See if we can let you maybe watch from inside the box here as we finagle this. All right, so the screws actually are in there. I made it through and push this a little more. Okay, I'm right up against the edge here. And I've got, again, because it's a bad angle, it's angled down. I don't know. If it wasn't angled down, I think I have enough space here to put this plate on. to do is just take this lower hole and make that a little more bigger towards the top and then it won't be so angled see what I'm talking about there it's angled down it won't be so angled I should be able to get a bolt on on this side so I think that's the plan is I'm gonna push this back out I'm going to widen out the top there insert it one more time with my handy dating patented U-bolt thing with Bob, and then we'll go from there. Try that. So. We're in position. And what does the U-bolt say? Yeah, I think we got her. All right, that's it. Let's put that... Uh, so you can put the bracket on here. Let's spin one of these on. 
on here so I don't have to. Okay. That's patented. You saw it here today. You both thing the job. So if I tighten that down right there, now we're connected to the truck bed. You won't be able to lift this up and you will not be able to slide it. And you know, the angle iron in the back secures it on the security wall. So the whole backside secured down and this prevents it from sliding and trying to defeat that. So I think with this, I mean, obviously reciprocating saw, they can saw the whole thing open and get whatever you want, but I think we're good here. So I'm just gonna tighten that down and then we'll start to see what else is left to do in the box. All right, so let's load everything back up in the truck. I think things are looking pretty good and the box is kind of complete. It's secured down to the bed through our U-bolt and also through the angle iron that's on the back that's tucked under the security wall, which is secured. And I think, let's see if we can get all this stuff back in there. I can show you where everything fits and how it goes together. So first thing is, I have this inserting a, it's a three by four bed pan. That's a, like from a large dog kennel. And I'm gonna use this just to kind of slide things back and forth so it'll go in and then the camp kitchen, the griddle namely, can kind of be loaded in the back. So I'm pull it halfway out. Put the griddle in. So, and then once the griddle's on there, you can slide this all the way to the back like that. Next thing I'm gonna put in are these long poles. These are for supporting the awning. And I'm just gonna slide them in kind of right next to the griddle. And the griddle has a little gas nipple that's sitting on the side. I'm gonna be careful with that. We don't wanna damage that. Next thing I'm putting in are the four legs for the uh, tabletop. And I'll show you that towards the end here. But these four legs I painted black. They're just PVC pipe. Just paint them to make them look real nice. I'll slide them in there. At this point, normally I put luggage in but I don't have the luggage down here, but let's show you what it looks like inside right now. Anyways, I measured this out so it would fit the luggage that we're taking on our trip exactly. So I got one suitcase that'll fit back in that corner right there. And I got a big brown suitcase that'll fit up here in the front. But right now we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna load in some miscellaneous things that, that I've been carrying around. I have some little outdoor carpet remnants these probably will come on the trip. That way, if we get to some spot, we can just put the carpet down and have a place for our feet that should fit in there. These are just some knee pads, um, like for gardening. I kind of like them, so if I'm claw crawling around on the truck, I have those. These are just some cargo pads. I like having these in the back of the truck just to have them. They may or may not come on the trip with us. All right, next thing is I have this Reliance uh, water jug, and this will fit right here in this nook. And again, this box was built around the stuff that we're going to put in front here. So I got this water jug, I think. That's liters, gallon. So it says it's like a six or seven gallon tank. So we'll fill that with water. We'll also have other supply of water like water bottles and we're not going totally off the grid here so anyways that'll be there coming in right next to you here are my camp chairs so you can see I put one right here so between the box and the bed frame 
Um, two camp chairs will fit. I'll just put those in. It's hard for you to kind of see them from where you're at. Maybe we'll just move you. So you can see the camp chairs going in there. I'm probably going to carry, normally I have always two camp chairs. My son does a lot of athletic activities where we go watch him play. And my wife and I just always have these two camp chairs in, in the truck all the time. And so that's where they ride is right up along the edge there. And then this final little spot right here is for the all purpose buckets. And you know, one of them, I have the, the kit that you can use it as a shitter. So you can put cat litter or bags in there and it's got a little toilet seat that fits on the top. And then a pinch, you can pinch one off, I guess, yeah. So, and the last thing that we'll put in here is just the, the door. And you've seen this a couple of times. This door fits in that port right there. Frame you up. So this is the door for the port. It's got laminate on this side, so we can use this as a camp kitchen or table. So it's got table legs on the other side. And this is where those black legs that I painted, you know, they, they fit into this port. So this is dual purpose. It's a security port or security wall here for, for this box. And then also when you get to the camp, you can pull it off and then use it as a table. So this slides in here. It's pretty snug. So it get, gets in there and it's pretty tight up against the, the wall and everything. So that's what it looks like when it's all kind of there. And then when you close the tailgate on this, that tailgate then now, I'll just keep putting that up there, patent pending. So that tailgate now prevents anybody from removing this port. So this thing, so I can pull it out a little bit, but I'm not getting it out far enough where I can lift it up or do anything with it. And so it's kind of like the same way that your deck system is secured using the tailgate. Obviously, if they defeat the tailgate, which is possible, then they can get access to everything in that box. Um, but that's the odds I'm playing, I guess.